I'm going, going back to the production system now. We have um, comp time. And I just wanted to confirm with you that that is a row that is representing comp time taken. Yes. And not comp time earned. Uh, I put it in as comp time taken. Okay. That's my thinking. But so if their time card is set up to say they work eight and a half hours one day, but they worked 11, that will that automatically go to will that automatically go to um comp time i mean or overtime or i i don't know how that part of this works okay we have something new and i would suggest you experiment with it a little bit the test system and see if it'll work okay. for you so um i'm going to add a new category here i'm going to call it comp time earned And you'll see down at the bottom, there's a thing called exclude from totals. Okay. Right. And it says if this category tracks accrued time, like accrued comp time, then exclude it from time reporting totals. That means any time I put in here is not going to be added to the, the time I'm reporting for the day. So I'll say yes. And it counts as work time as far as, well, actually no, it counts as, yeah, it counts as work time as far as the payroll timesheet category goes, and it doesn't map to any primer section. Okay, so that's how I would set up a timesheet row that is specifically to track the amount of comp time you earn, you earn each day. Now, let me show you how it works on my time card. Okay. So it is not automatic. And we went around and around trying to figure out how to automatically calculate comp time earned. And it turned out that there are so many different rules in so many different counties that there's no way we can calculate it manually. Okay. So if I, uh, let's say Tuesday, October 13th, uh, instead of three hours, I put in, um, nine hours here, and I regularly work an eight hour day, mm -hmm. I can put one hour in comp time earned. If, if my county rule says I get one hour for every one hour of overtime worked in a day. Okay, so you're accounting for your nine hours on professional direct, which will make it go all nine hours to a program or anything, mm -hmm. but then you're basically separately telling it that one of those hours is comp time. So at the end of the pay period or the week, I can say, give me the total of comp time earned for this employee, and it will say they earn 10 hours. Exactly. And, and then we give it at time and a half, so then I would go, okay, 10 hours of actual hours earned, so that's actually 15 hours of comp time to their bank. Right. And sometime down the road, we can start adding some custom reports that compare comp time earned versus comp time taken okay. and giving employees a balance. And if I do okay. my timesheet export, you'll see that I have a comp time earned row. Okay. And it's not added up, right? So I've got nine hours, one hour comp time earned, total hours for that day is nine hours. All right. Okay. So that's what that, you know, do not include in totals means is it, it's an accrued time tracking as opposed to a actual report of time worked. Okay, so um, we'll also need, because here in Clusa we have to be so different, we work technically, um, we only work 37 and a half hour weeks. Mm -hmm. So when they're working, but the biologists work nine hour days. So technically when they work their full nine hour day, they're working some of that time. The time earned between 37 and a half and 40 is paid at straight time and then anything after 40 is paid at 
um, time and a half. So when they do their totals at the end of a week, they have 37 and a half hours work time, and then they get two and a half hours straight time. And then they get, if they have 42 hours, then they get two hours of time and a half time. Okay. So, so can I add, just like you did the comp time earned, can I also put straight, uh, what is it called, straight overtime? Yeah, let me, sh let me show you how we, we deal with that. So I'm gonna go into user admin and I'm gonna go into my account. Uh, and see over here where it says expected hours? Oops. Yes. So I'm gonna put in my expected hours, right? Mm -hmm. And I, we have a seven and a half hour day, which I think is what you work, right? We're technically yeah. supposed to, but we work a 980, so we actually work eight and a half hour days. Well, this is messed up. We work two eight hour days and three eight and a half hour days or something like that. I don't, honestly, I don't know. I have to look every time I need to know. But it's spread between <laughs> eight hour days or eight and a half hour days. Let's see. Let's do the math real quick. One, two, three. That would be too many hours. And then you get you get a Friday off, right? Yes. So that is one, two, three, four, five, seventy-two, seventy-five. It yep, should be seventy-seven. It's thirty-seven and a half week and a half hour weeks. Okay. So. Now I've set up my expected hours. When I go to my uh, timesheet and I export my timesheet, so let's go ahead and fill out a, a full timesheet. So let's say I work, you know, with the expected number of hours every day. Um, let's change that to eight and a half. And then I'll go down to indirect. You're on a Sunday there. I don't know if it matters. Whoops. Okay, so each day that I'm that I'm here, right, I'm working the exact number of hours expected. I, I okay. guess I got the math wrong, um, but it's forty-one and a half the first week and thirty-three and a half the second week because that's my Friday off week. Yep. So, as far as the system's concerned, I've worked no overtime, right, because I've worked the number of hours that I'm expected to work. Mm -hmm. Now, if I adjust that and I go back to user admin, I go to my account, I go to my expected hours. So on these eight and a half hour days, I'm getting, um, would you say it was one and a half hours at time and a half? Well, that's all they're required to work, but we're asking them to work nines instead. So they work um, they were four, five nines, and then they were, no, they were four nines and one eight, and then four nines the next week. Okay. So, but the county doesn't recognize that. So that's why it's a straight overtime. They get paid straight. So let's do, this is what I'm actually being asked to work. So I do four nines and an eight, and then I do another. Four nines. Four nines. Uh huh. Okay. Let me get rid of this comp time earned. So now, if I look at my timesheet, it's going to say that I earned 
or I, I worked five hours of overtime. Okay. For a total of 80? Yep, because my, my total expected work hours is 75 hours for a two-week period, and I worked 80 hours in a two-week period. So it's 75 at regular time and five at overtime. Perfect. That, and that'll be, and then this is the sheet that we'll get. And then from this, we'll, we'll be able to fill in the spreadsheet that we do for payroll. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Although the actual sheet you probably want to export will be the payroll because the timesheet report will have all of these categories in it. Okay. But you want most of these compressed just into work time. So if you use the payroll export, it's basically the same thing, but it just has less rows. Oh, it I see what you're saying. Compresses everything saying. down into work time. Yeah. But it'll have the same um, overtime calculation up here at the top. 